So welcome back, friends, to the shop. You know, what was it? Four weeks ago or so, I, uh, when, I picked, when I picked up this bike, I said, oh, you know, I'm pretty much going to leave everything stock. Well, that's, that's, that's completely changed, primarily because um, I didn't know what I was talking about. <laughs> <laughs> the truth be known. So, uh, so here's the deal. So I've done a ton of modification for the bike uh, to make it more suitable to this area. Now, one thing that's been really interesting is uh, what, there's been a lot of controversy in the comments from, um, I guess, motorcycle guys like, this is stupid. This won't work. You don't know what you're talking about. Yeah, you're right. I don't know a lot what I'm talking about. But everything that I've done on this bike is under the guidance of one of the top bike builders in the country. Um, he only works for certain people, you know, he's a retired guy, he's got tons of experience, and he just does everything the best of the best. There's guys he, all over the country that buy brand new bikes and ship them to him in the crate, and he sets them all up. So fortunately, he lives really close by here, and he has been very gracious and given me a lot of time, and, and I spent the day yesterday to shop with him uh, uh, of getting everything set up. So this is not my thinking that's going to work here. This is stuff, the way he sets up bikes for professional riders. Uh, he sets up bike for Red Bull riders in this area. It's very specific for this type of riding. So um, those of you who are making those comments that this is not going to work or, you know, this is stupid. In all honesty, you don't know what you're talking about. You're not from the area. And, and, and I'm, th this is not, these are not my ideas. These are coming from tons and tons of experience. So let's jump in it. We'll go from uh, tail to tip uh, and I'll show you everything that I've done. We'll start on the right side rear here. So one thing that happens uh, uh, when you're riding rocks and stuff is you can uh, smash and damage these rear discs really easily because they hang down there so low. So this is a, uh, I think this is Enduro Engineering. It's a shark, shark's fin. It's a heavy duty aluminum guard. That This piece is replaceable that, that um, you replaces the, the rear brake mounting caliper right there. And so that can, you can take that off and replace that, but that will, you go on and ride in the rocks, you'll see that they're all dinged up and smashed up, um, and that will protect this. Of course, also uh, switched over to the rear handbrake um, using all factory KTM parts, so all stainless steel braided lines, so everything is, is all original equipment, as well as the tubeless uh, tire system in here. The tubeless tires are, that's one of the most amazing things I've ever ridden. I'm running um, three and a half pounds in these and the traction is unbelievable. I was riding the other day on some really slippery stuff uh, with some other guys and behind them watching them go up this, you know, kind of a steep muddy hill and they were, they were paddling with their feet and, and just, you know, spinning out and putting ruts in the trail, uh, you know, running 15 pounds of pressure, me running three and a half, it just crawls up there like a, like, like a track. It didn't even spin. It's absolutely uh, incredible. Up on top, the FMF Racing uh, 2.1 Turbo Core. This is a U.S. Forest Service approved spark arrester, uh, so we can ride in the forest. Another thing that's made a really huge difference is uh, replacing the spring on the on the rear shock. So these come uh, pretty undersprung for lighter weight guys. So working with Bob, uh, what we did is is I put myself on the scale uh, with all my riding gear. That's with the tools and with the water bladder and and all of the stuff you know that you would carry on a long enduro ride. Um, and then uh, and then measure the spring accordingly uh, to compensate for all that weight. I think. These are set up from the factory like a 160 pound rider. Um, and you know, me coming in with all my gear, I'm close to 250 pounds, you know, with everything on boots and all of that. So we went up five spring sizes or five, five springs uh, stiffer uh, to, um, to level that out and to, uh, and to improve the, to, to get the bike set up for my weight. This is one of my favorite uh, changes right here. The factory pegs, uh, they felt really small for me and they sit up really tall. So these pegs uh, are much bigger. They're, they're probably half again as the, uh, size wise bigger than the, than the stock ones. And they give you a nice wide platform and they clean out really good. The mud falls through them and they don't gum up. But the most important thing is, is that you can adjust them so they sit lower. So they're quite a bit lower than the factory pegs as well as they sit back. So for taller riders, if you're, if you know, you're a big rider, um, you can, if you can pick up three quarters of an inch here and, and get those things back a little bit, it makes a huge, huge difference. That that's one of the best things that I've done. This is something I haven't ridden yet. These are aftermarket, uh, frame protectors and they, uh, the factory ones were just this black slick plastic and I found them to be very slippery on the boots. These have a, a rubber compound that tie in good with the boots and help you to pinch in and to hold the bike to hold on to the bike uh, with your with your legs. One thing I tried that I, I really liked at first and then I started to have a problem with are, are these, uh, these are called Steg's pegs and they're made by, invented by a guy in Australia. And 
I loved riding with them. What the principle is is they've got these rubber discs on here. They bolt onto the kind of the factory settings. There's a U bolt there, and as you pinch in the bike, you lock in your motorcycle boot uh, behind these rubber discs, and they work great, especially for hill climbing. It takes all the pressure off your arm. You, when you're going through really ruddy stuff, it helps to be really stable on the bike. The downside I had with one of these is they hurt my knees because what I found is I I got to relying on them so much, and I spent so much time with my knee keyed in there that my knee was un, kind of unnaturally bent all the time and the normal riding as you stand up and up and down you know you kind of get a, a nice range of motion um, and they make my knees sore so I adjusted them even all the way back and I still had the problem so I don't know that I'm going to be able to use those so this is a trail tech electric fan kit there's only a fan on just one radiator that's all, all you need and it ties in it was really slick it tied into the factory harness just plugged right in it's got a little thermostat on there that gives you the gives you your ambient air temperature which is kind of cool and then you can set when you want it to come in. If you look right there, there's a copper thermostat that presses in between the radiator fins, and that's what uh, the sensor for this. So when you start, if you're doing a long hill climb uh, or you're not passing air through, uh, this will come on and cool the bike down immediately. And then that just is a tremendous amount of insurance for protecting the engine and, and keeping it cool. I've also added a billet aluminum. These are bulletproof um, guards uh, for the radiator. It's, they, they offer cup protection a couple different ways. You know, of course, from punctures, if you get, get into a stick or something, that's going to uh, protect that radiator, radiator from getting a hole in it. But primarily, it's the side impact that really will get you. If you, when you dump your bike off of a rock or something um, and you hit really hard on this, it will just crush the radiators. And that's an expense. Uh, you ruin your ride. I mean, you, and then your bike's going to overheat. It could take. It could be catastrophic. So this is insurance for that. So it's all billet aluminum. It's it's really well made. It ties into the factory mounts, and it's super rigid. You can drop your bike hard on rocks right there, and that's going to absorb that impact, transferring it to the frame um, and protect those fragile radiators. So up here on the controls, I've, I've done a lot of stuff up here, actually. So uh, to, to account for my, my height and my big, long gorilla arms, um, I've raised the bars with the factory uh, bar risers. That's about an inch and a quarter or so, and moved everything forward. So those are really nice. They're, I had some on my old bike, and they were kind of some cheesy aftermarket ones. And every time I'd crash, they would twist and mess up. These will not. They're all keyed into the triple clamp. They're super, super burly. So up front here, I've added the, the ProGuard uh, aluminum. Uh, these are the roof shields as well as the heavy duty. This is a really great setup. Bob put all this together for me. Um, I've just never seen a stronger setup than this. These things are tough, man. I, I had to, it, it was, took quite a bit to fit these to the bars and I had to, um, um, rather than use the expansion that's in there, uh, we drilled and tapped the handlebar and threaded in an, an aluminum insert, loctited it all in, and this actually threads into that. Because in past bikes I've had crashed where these things will get sprung in those stupid um, expansion nuts, they pull out all the time, they're phony. This is really done properly. And with the factory, uh, all with the factory grips and the factory, vulcan vulcanized throttle grips and all of that. Um, the way, what really makes it strong is this bar up front. I'm really stoked how Bob put all this together. So this is a, this is a thick, this is heavy. It's probably half inch aluminum bar across here that ties into the, um, the pro tape with these pro tape, pro taper bars with the clamps here, bolts on here. And then the, the hand grip bars come in like this. And th these are thick. This is all half inch stuff. I heard some people say that, oh, you don't want to ride these. You know, you hit something and they'll crush your hand on there. These are uh, not these. I mean, the, the amount of force that it would take to break these things, uh, you're going to have way bigger problems than a crushed hand. I mean, maybe that happened on some cheesy, um, skinny l l ones, but not, not, I, I just don't see that that's possible. Um, I would rather have these big guards on here to protect all of the levers and the controls and my hands because riding in the trees it's I mean, it's daunting when you're bombing 30 miles an hour down a single track the through that are tight you know where you're just clearing trees by inches on the sides uh, you want that you want that protection on your hands and this is really rock solid so these are the bar clamps those are you got the four allens on there and those are right pushed up tight to the at the widest part of the bar there the, by the bar clamps and they uh are all billets, super nice. And it's also nice as it pushes these hand guards out so you can still access and you can see your, your odometer and your trip computer and all of that stuff. This is one of the best parts right here, the double, the double handle. So we've got a clutch on the top. This is just the factory clutch that we moved up. And this is a bracket that Bob builds here 
uh, to, to hold that. It just basically gives you like another handlebar up there and moving the brake off of the foot uh, over here over here under the handle, like a bicycle. Uh, the only reason why motorcycles didn't, didn't have brakes up here originally was because they needed to have a clutch handle. You know, now with the advent of the auto clutch, uh, that's just not necessary anymore. So having it up here is so much better, uh, for, in my opinion. The argument's always was made in the comments that, well, if that's so good, how come the top enduro riders don't ride them? Well, maybe they prefer it that way. I don't know. I don't know those guys. But one thing I do know is that they have to ride, kind of have to ride factory bikes. You know, they, they'll fly all over the place and they'll ship them a bike. You know, sometimes they have their own, but sometimes they have to have a, so they t typically want to ride a bike that's as stock as possible. It's easier to get parts for and all of that. So why they don't, you know, I don't know. Uh, all I know is that this is really popular here. Everyone's riding them and it's, it's just so much easier easier to, to ride and so much easier to modulate, especially with these uh, mid, Midwest mountain, um, these brake levers. They are wider, they're thicker, they're heavier, and they pull twice as hard. Truly, with one finger, an index finger like this, a, a single pull, I can lock the rear tire uh, on dirt easily. Uh, if it gets really bad, you know, two fingers, but that's it. That's all you're ever going to need. They, the pressure that they put on the rear brake is so uh, so strong. So as you can see here, these, this guard system here is really great. It wraps all the way around. The roost guards are super rigid, and that's going to protect all of those those levers in there. Um, I run them a little bit loose, so if it, if you were to get something in there that that it could move a little bit rather than breaking, but they're pretty pretty tough. I don't think that there's going to be a problem there. Placement is excellent. I don't use the clutch a lot with the, with the recluse clutch. It's primarily going to be the brake. But if I do want to use it, I, I, I can, can do it, and I can operate it from any position with one hand. And, and I may move this a little bit, but I think, I think it's going to be pretty close to this position. This is a great setup right there. The next thing that I did was I changed the gearing front and rear sprockets. Uh, the factory was a 1350. Uh, that's 13 teeth on the front and 50 on the rear. I went to a 1252. Um, and the reason why I talked, I noticed it was too tall, especially when we were up in some really steep stuff on some hill climbing, even first gear was a little bit tall on this bike. So I talked to Bob about it and, and he recommended that what he's running on his, his, all their bikes here are the 1252s because what that does is it allows you to keep pretty much keep the same, um, distance between the wheels. If you just change one sprocket, uh, it can pull, a, you know, pull the chain up or pull the wheel forward or push it back and it affects the characteristics, the handling of the bike. Yeah, if you do pull the wheel back, it might be a little bit better for hill climbing, but it's gonna be a little more lethargic. It's not going to be as quick turning, where if you get it too far forward, you know, you just have the opposite effect. So if you wanna maintain, uh, have that mountain gearing and maintain that, that uh, the distance between the wheels, that 12, uh, 52 is pretty close. And of course, up front here is the 12 tooth sprocket. Good luck finding one of those. I, I couldn't find it anywhere. My brother-in-law told me, he's like, you want to get that 12 tooth? I looked all over the place. I couldn't find it. They're not really even made anywhere that I know of. Bob is, have, is having these made at, a, at a, a machine shop somewhere. I don't know where. So I, I got it from him. So that's a 12 up front. So that's going to gear it way, way down. Um, and give you that uh, to be able to pull hills, hill climbs in second and third gear. This right here has been the biggest improvement that I've done on the bike, and that's the running, getting rid of that horrible factory carburetor and running uh, the Electron carburetor. I was having terrible times with, uh, it was running too rich, it was fouling plugs, I was changing everything, and I, was, I, I couldn't get it adjusted right. It wouldn't idle, I mean, it was just a nightmare. So I started talking or asking around, uh, and all, everyone said the same thing, he's like, put Electron on it. So this is, uh, uh, is a carburetor that's self-adjusting. You don't have to touch it. It came from Electron, and it was perfect. It was, it was bolt on. The only thing I had to do is to bring it up to, or bring it up to temperature. And I turned this idle screw, maybe a quarter of a turn and I increased the idle a little bit. And from, it's been absolutely flawless. It uh, adjusts for altitude, elevation. It adjusts for temperature. It's like having a fuel injection without all of that nonsense. This bike right here is the last year of the 300s before they go to full fuel injection. And that fuel injection is, it's got some serious problems with two strokes. It's adding a ton of weight. There's already sorts of, all sorts of issues. You know, it's kind of like the, you remember the smog, the days of the smog era in the seventies when they bolted all that stuff on those cars and, you know, choked them down and nothing worked very good in the smog pumps. That's kind of where we're at with the two stroke, uh, 
some of some of that uh, fuel injection. So this right here has just been it's been amazing the difference. It, as soon as I put it on, uh, it was a different bike. It's clean, it's crisp, it do, it never bogs. It just hits. Uh, is the throttle is always there. It is that's just amazing. So that's pretty much it. This will probably be the last video I do on the on the setup. Uh, I've got two things coming. I've got a P3 carbon carbon uh, pipe guard. There'll be a full wrap uh, to protect that that pipe, as well as uh, an S was it SXS full length um, a ABS skid plate, uh, which will wrap up, cover the front, and go back. And there's e it even covers that rear linkage that hangs down. So when you're going over logs and different things. Um, the only other thing that I might do is, is I'm, I want to ride it with this gearing first, so I don't know yet. Um, but if I do want a little bit more bottom end on it, um, I might replace the head, put a high compression head in it. And that, that would be it. That, the bike was, is pretty much totally set up. Um, I might have to do put springs in the front forks to, to account for my weight. I do like a pretty plush ride. I'm, I'm not a super fast rider. I'm more of a, I like technical uh, drop offs, you know, things like that. So if I start you know, if I'm, if I'm using up too much of the front forks, then I, I might have to do that or at least even go with a thicker fluid to slow that down. But that would probably be, uh, that's it. I mean, there's, there's just nothing really more to do. It's really, really well set up here now for our area. Uh, one thing that I did that the, if you're going to put electron carburetor on um, and you have a new bike, this is an 18 300 TE, uh, you can't use the factory throttle, which the KTM throttle is really nice. Um, compared to you know these cheesy aftermarket ones. And so uh, when I got, bought the carburetor, the guys at Electron, they, they didn't have the cable because they, they changed it. And so they sent an aftermarket one with a different cable. And I put that on there and I didn't like it. Just the build quality of it. It's hard to take a factory KTM part off and put something you know, something like this on there. And then I didn't have the vulcanized grips, factory grips anymore. And it, it was awful. So what I ended up doing is uh, getting rid of this and going and modifying the cable. So I just took three quarters of an inch off of the housing uh, so that it would work with a carburetor. You can do that, just strip that, that off there. Then you can use the factory uh, throttle and the factory grips and all that and not have to have um, an aftermarket part uh, for it. So I'm much, much happier about that. All right, thanks for watching, and we'll see you guys on the next video.